Hey guys, I'm Chris Dora and today we're going to have a discussion on how to choose your fly selection for a typical lowland fishery. Now, lowland rivers are local to most people in New Zealand. We fish them a lot because they're productive, they're stable, and we generally have a good time. We can do it within restricted uh, time frames because they are generally close to home. Rivers such as the Matara, the Opahe and the Mochuaika, and others up in the north certainly are some of our most productive fisheries. But where to start with fly selection? Let's check this out. Your typical lowland river is an exceptionally stable environment for food. And amongst the riffles are a plethora of mayfly nymphs, caddis, small black stoneflies, and a host of other creatures. In the calmer waters you may have snails, carixa and midge. In the trees you have willow grubs, brown beetle in the grass, and of course, when you get closer to the tussocky surround, cicada. Now how to choose the flies? Let's work on this. Now with their very stable natures, rocky structure and very well oxygenated water, it's no wonder that riffles are the lifelines of most rivers. It is a breeding ground, a food factory for aquatic insects, aquatic nymphs, and this is where your adult forms of mayfly and the lights come from. Now if I get to a river, the first thing I'm going to do is turn over a rock and see what's crawling around underneath. That's how simple your fly selection can be. Now by turning over any rock in a riffle, you'll see what's crawling down beneath. This represents what's available to the trout. Here we see a lot of rocky uh, pupil uh, cocoons for caddis grubs. Now if we turn this over, we actually see a caddis grub there. Now if they're available under the rocks, they're available to the trout. And it's as simple as matching something from your fly box to what you see crawling around. Now horn case caddis are prolific in most river systems. As you can see, the shiny little size 14 or 16 horny case here um, homes a very small insect inside, represented a lot by specific patterns or just your standard mayfly nymph. Simply match the coloration and size with something from your box. And here is a mayfly nymph. You can get as carried away with Latin names and entomology as you wish, but by simply looking at the size colour and shape, that's about a size 16 there, and matching it with anything from your fly box. And you can guarantee you're on the right track. Now you've seen how we select nymphs for the riffles. Once we get to the river you turn over a rock and simply match the colour, shape and size with something you have inside your fly box. It's pretty simple right? A trout don't care about names. Now when they start rising to the surface, it's also important to have a look and match what the fish are feeding on. If you look in the air, you might see these little mayfly uh, lifting directly up off the river, flying vertically or upstream to make their way to the willows and streamside grasses. Take a note of the coloration and the size of them and match it with a parachute fly or a dad's favorite or an Adams or anything that represents what you're seeing. By looking down at your feet in the water, you might see spent spinners. You might see their glassy wings splayed. You may see them lying dead in the eddies. Again, a fish are decorpusing and feeding on spinners. Simply match the coloration, most likely a brownish or mahogany brownish color, and the size, most likely a 14 through to an 18, with something from your fly box. A fish are feeding on beetle, have a look at the beetle on the water and match something plump, match something in size and imitate them. If in doubt, throw on a general terrestrial, throw on a royal wolf, throw on a blowfly, throw on a larger parachute or a cicada in the season and put it through the pools and see what happens. So I'm just calling into BB Sports here in Gore to top up my fly box on the way through to the Lower Matau River. I always find it's important to visit shops close to the proximity of where you're fishing as their flies are going to be very specific to those particular fisheries. I'm expecting to find a lot more size 16s and 18s down here than I will in a lot of other places, simply because that's what the locals require. Let's take a look. I just so thought, we're noticing a lot of 16s and 18s here, which is very specific to our Southland fishery. Now when fish are feeding on mayflies, I'm gonna be looking towards my pheasant tail nymphs. My lighter colored hairs here nymphs for a bit of variety and maybe a bit more bulk in areas. I'm gonna want some with tungsten bead heads so they can sink and looking at beads of different sizes. Sometimes you do need to get deeper than you expect. Some days the fish are in the shallows or near the surface and little unweighted patterns are the go. 
Now the Simon's Iron Maiden, as you can see, is a very popular fly. Again, copper wire abdomen, two tungsten beads, is designed to be a smaller fly that gets down deep fast. Across here we have our Carl's Deleotidium and Carl's Nest Miletus. They're two of my favourite all-time patterns due to their slim profile and the propensity to imitate perfectly the insects that the trout are feeding on. Occasionally you're going to want a little bit of flash and that's where our gold bead heads or silver bead heads come in. Some days you have low light, some days you've got a bit of colour in the river, some days your flies just need to get seen. And over through here we have our bead head pheasant tail nymphs and our gold tungsten bead here in coppers, which will provide exactly what it is I'm looking for. And again, when fish are looking up, we're discussing our mayfly emerges and mayfly duns. The emerger is essentially a floating nymph, sitting just beneath or within the surface, which fish tend to feed on with abandon. As the adults break free and float down the surface, you're looking for a more of a floating style fly. However, I still like film flies, flies that float naturally and small, and that's why I like the Parachute Adams and Parachute Dad's favourites. They're easy to see, they present the prey image that the trout are looking for, and they're very slim, sparse ties. Over here we have our Blowflies and our Royal Wolves. Now the Blowflies are a very uh, impressionistic pattern, imitates the Blowfly, but can also be taken for beetles. They float high, their black and white contrast are very easy to see, and the deer hair back and thicker deer hair tail holds up a nymph when fishing a dry dropper combo pretty easily. Fly selection is largely a personal choice and while there are many 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 thousands of fly patterns available today in New Zealand, you can choose what suits yourself, your passions and your rivers. I'm Chris Duran, I hope this is helpful. Hey cheers!